Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and this might be one of my favorite historic decks in recent memory. It's titled Devil's Experiment, since we're playing with Experimental Frenzy and Devil's Play, one of the latest additions from the new anthology expansion, a sorcery for X and Red, dealing X damage to any target. So very similar to Banefire, although it isn't uncounterable and damage can be prevented, but it also has Flashback for X and Triple Red, which makes this much more desirable than Banefire in this deck. So what is this deck trying to accomplish? Well, we're a 28 land deck, so plenty of lands, almost half of our deck in fact. And then we have 4 copies of Dried of Legion Grove and 4 copies of Wayward Swordtooth, which both let us play an extra land on each of our turns, so we can make use of all those extra lands in the deck. And then once we accumulate a ton of lands, we can try and kill the opponent with a giant Devil's Play or flash it back or we can win the game by making dragon tokens with our Dragon Master Outcast, a 1-mana one 1-1 one one Human Shaman, that at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control 6 or more lands, we get to make a 5-5 five five Red Dragon Creature token with flying, and with all the extra land drops between the Dryad, the Swordtooth and even the Grazer, we can pretty easily start making dragons around turn 4. But possibly the most important card in the deck is Experimental Frenzy, a 4-mana Shaman saying we can look at the top card of our library at any time, and we may play land cards and cast spells from the top of our library, but we can't play land cards or cast spells from our hand, and for 3 in a red we can also destroy the Frenzy if we want to gain access to our hand once again. So with Experimental Frenzy it has two main limiting factors. One is when you hit your second land drop for the turn, and you can't keep playing lands off the top of your deck, and your turn kind of ends there. And the second problem you run into with Frenzy is if you don't have enough mana to cast the spells on top of your deck. And this deck tries to solve both of those problems. The land drop problem by playing Dryad and Surtooth, so we can play additional land drops for the turn, so we can keep playing lands off the top of our deck with Experimental Frenzy. And then the problem of not having enough mana kind of gets solved by the Swordtooth and the Dryad by giving us extra lands, but also by limiting how expensive the win conditions in this deck are. Since Dragon Master Outcast, even though it can easily win the game by itself, only costs us one mana, so it's very easy to play off the top of our deck with Frenzy. And then Devil's Play. If we don't have the mana to cast a huge Devil's Play to burn the opponent out, we can always decide to play a Devil's Play for one mana, x equals zero, and just put it in the graveyard, forget about it until we want to flash it back, because we can still flash it back even with Experimental Frenzy in play, and by hitting so many land drops we will eventually accumulate enough mana to cast a lethal Devil's Play even from the graveyard, even if it costs us a little bit more. And then we're also an Escape to the Wilds deck, which is our additional card draw engine besides Experimental Frenzy, which for 5 mana lets us exile the top 5 cards of our library. We may play cards exile this way until the end of our next turn, and we can also play an additional land this turn. So this also synergizes very well with Experimental Frenzy, since the cards don't end up in our hand. So even if we cast Escape from the top of our deck with Frenzy, we still gain access to all 5 of those cards, since they will be in exile. And of course, the extra land drop also synergizes very well with the rest of our deck. And then we also get to play with Gigantha as our companion. I didn't make any compromises to include Gigantha in the companion slot, so for now it's just a free roll, a 5 mana 5-5 five five that we might play every now and then. But if some changes happen to the companion mechanic soon, the deck is totally fine without Gigantha. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we also have the full playset of Arboreal Gracer, which lets us put an extra land in play, as well as the full playset of Lenor Elves, and both of these one drops help us play Dryad and Swordtooth on turn 2, so we can start playing those extra lands as soon as possible to get the Frenzy and Escape to the Wilds going. And then some other synergies worth mentioning here. We are playing the full playset of Fabled Passage, which has pretty good synergy with Experimental Frenzy, since we can potentially shuffle away the top card of our library if we don't like it with a Fabled Passage and have a shot at a better card. And we're also playing Dried of Legion Grove, which lets us stamp the Fabled Passage for mana without having to sacrifice it. So if we have Dried, we usually want to keep the Fabled Passage uncracked for as long as possible, just use a Dried to tap it for mana, and then once we play Experimental Frenzy and we need to shuffle the top of our deck, we can sacrifice our Fabled Passage. And then we also have 4 copies of Stomping Ground, 4 Rootbound Crag, 10 Forests and 6 Mountains. There is potentially room for utility lands with activated abilities in the mana base, but I haven't found them necessary. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty good opening hand. In this case, 
I prefer playing Lander Elves first, because we only have the three land drops. If we have more lands, then uh, playing Grazer becomes more appealing, since it's less vulnerable to removal. Facing Azurius Guildgate, so some sort of gate or Field of the Dead deck. And we've got almost our entire hand in play by turn 2. And Frenzy is a perfect curve topper. Turn 2 Growth Spiral. And a Temple of Mystery. So it's looking more like Field of the Dead. Alright, I guess we'll escape first. I'd love to see all these lands. Don't need to fetch with the Fable Passage yet. Get to make my first dragon next turn already. Although we could see a Shatter the Sky clean everything up. It's just a tapped Castle Ventress. And it's a fairy. Devil's Play. How much mana can I sink into this Devil's Play? Seven if I attack with Elves. So it's not quite lethal, but it's very close. Definitely considering just putting the Devil's Play in the graveyard, so we can potentially just burn our opponent out next turn. The play might just be to Devil's Play my opponent twice instead of playing Swordtooth and Frenzy. So let's do that. Just go face with everyone. Grab a mountain. This plays much better against any potential sweeper. Double tap Q to float all our mana, so X equals 6. And now even if they wipe the board, I can burn them out with a flashback to Devil's Play. But I will admit that playing Swordtooth and Frenzy is a lot more fun. And there's a Shatter. But they are dead to the flashback. And that's why Devil's Play is uh, better than Banefire would be here. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with uh, pretty nice hands. Elf into Dryad or Surtooth, and then we've got our Frenzy in hand already. Yeah, let's play the Elf. The Elf might die, whereas Grazer we don't care about as long as it puts the land in play, but with Dryad and Swordtooth, we will deplete our extra land drops pretty quickly, so I would rather play the Elf, I think. Opponent with a Stitcher Supplier, Dracoseth in the Graveyard, so we're facing Reanimator. Alright, uh, let's just play Dryad into Grazer. And then we'll probably play Swordtooth before we deploy the Frenzy. Alright, Ashok. I, I guess can exile my Devil's Place from the graveyard and prevents me from shuffling with Fabled Passage and getting a land. Kind of surprised that they milled me instead of themselves. Alright, Frenzy. Thing the plan is still to play Surtooth. Could also play Gigantha. But we're pretty close to the city's blessing. Guess I'll go after Ashok. 
although they're pretty happy to chump with the supplier, although maybe they are uh, relying on blood for bones, in which case they'll need supplier. Alright, opponent is splashing white for Umburial rights. didn't see any white mana yet, so wasn't quite sure. Opponent is still milling me. Alright. I could play another Surtooth first, but I think it's time to go for Frenzy here. And then... Uh, I'm not gonna tap the Elf, because I want to attack with it. Grazer... sure. Alright, did not hit any lands off the top, which is unfortunate, but I do get to attack with Surtooth and deal damage. Thirst for meaning, opponent's digging. Discards Agent and Ulamog, but still misses on land drop. Let's play Outcast. Start hitting those juicy land drops. Oh yes. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, hit all our land drops for the turn. Attack. And now if we find Devil's Play, we can just burn them out. Get to make two Dragon Tokens. More Agents go to the Graveyard. And a Stitcher Supplier. So they might not be dead on board. But we should be able to solve that problem. I'll take two. And there's a Devil's Play. For X equals five to the face, I guess works. I'm addicted to these land drops, I gotta keep going. But yeah, I can attack with all and our opponent's dead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty decent hand. Elf into Dryads and then Escape as our first big card draw engine. Let's see what we're up against. Ghost Quarter, Steel Overseer, alright, so some sort of tempered steel deck. Go Dryads into Outcasts. With Dryad, it didn't really matter how we sequenced our lands, but it would matter with uh, Surtooth. There's the namesake card. Alright, so opponent's got a nice start. I think I want to get Surtooth in play before I play Frenzy. So this turn we can go Surtooth plus Grazer, and then next turn we can decide if we want to Frenzy, or if we find another land, maybe cast Escape first. I really want to start hitting our land drops so we can make dragons with outcasts. So missing a land here is pretty unfortunate. Stone Coil for 4. Enters battlefield as a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, I think I want to escape first. And lands are basically all we want to see here. And then I can Devil's Play for two, which doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I could attack with a Surtooth, and if they block, I can Devil's Play to finish off whatever creature blocked. But it doesn't seem super important. So I think I'll just burn their face for one and play Grazer, and then have as much mana available as possible for Frenzy next turn. And Grazer could be useful as an extra chum blocker. And then we'll start making our first dragon token with outcasts.
And glitters on the serpent. 11, 11. Make that two. 17, 17. Yeah, that's going to be hard to beat. Guess I'll take it. So we somehow need to deal 19 damage to our opponents. Don't really see that happening. Another Frenzy. Don't have a shuffle effect. I can play Gigantha, but this has protection from multicolored, so I can't even block Stone Coil with Gigantha. I can Devil's Play for three, which isn't enough. And if my opponent attacks, I have 10, 16, 17. I guess I have enough toughness to survive if they don't play anything else. So I guess I'll just play Gigantha for now then. And then try and survive another turn, but every artifact or enchantment they play is going to add two power and toughness to the serpent, so... Yeah, casket should do it. Yeah, we were definitely in a good spot to start going off, but... Uh, double all that glitters is pretty hard for us to deal with. So even if I put everything in front there, I think we still die. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine opening hand with Elf into Dryads. I guess we're missing a draw engine, but hopefully we'll find one soon. Facing a Mardu deck. Nyx Fleece Ram, so maybe an enchantment deck. Could play Gigantha, could play Swordtooth. How close are we to the city's blessing? Probably not gonna get there next turn, is my guess. So let's probably just play Gigantha. Also have the option of finishing off the Nyx Fleece Ram with Devil's Play. But I would rather just play Gigantha for now. Don't need to sacrifice Fabled Passage quite yet, save it for Experimental Frenzy. And yep, there's Dryad, so looks like an enchantment deck maybe with Enchantress's presence. I guess we'll attack with uh both creatures here, see what happens. And then I might finish off a Dryad with this Devil's Play. Or I could save it. Now let's just cast it. Kill Dryads. And then next turn I have the option of flashing it back. Timely reinforcements. Alright, not bad. That is going to buy them a lot of time. And we haven't drawn anything amazing so far. So we do have the City's Blessing. Uh, 
All right, that makes sense. Opponent on the Honden deck. Oh, time to attack. I guess I'll send in the Elf too, why not? We've got plenty of mana. All right, just waiting for Frenzy, another Devil's Play, or Escape to the Wilds. Another Timely. Pretty good defensive measure. Don't really mind seeing Banishing Light. Means one fewer Banishing Light to get rid of my Frenzy if I find one. And speak of the Devil. Do I want to shuffle with Passage? I guess I'll just play it here. It's only one mana. I wasn't going to be able to play Escape anyway. Now I'll fetch to hit some land drops. Another Grazer, sure. And escape, which uh, I guess I want to shuffle. Could also draw it, but then I'll need to sack Frenzy to cast it, which isn't too useful. I might hit another Sword Tooth or Dryad here instead. Alright, not a bad turn. Still end up with escape on top. The green Honden is pretty manageable. The black one, I guess, means the green one now makes two tokens, but we don't mind the discard too much with Frenzy in play. Outcast is perfect here. Oh yeah, our deck's really going off now. And our opponent explodes. Devil's Play waiting as well to burn our opponent out. On to the next one. We're on the draw, facing a Yorion Sky Nomad deck. We've got a fine draw. Would love to hit a couple extra land drops to go with the Surtooth. But we've got a fine start. So next turn I could already cast my escape. Frenzy joins us as well, so a lot of good cards here. But escape gives me the highest chance of hitting additional land drops, which is what I care about right now. So let's do that. If I had played Dried instead of Surtooth, I wouldn't have been forced to sack the Fabled Passage, which might have been better. And of course I could have attacked for two. But you never know with this deck. You can get a lot of permanence in play out of nowhere. And in fact, there's a city's blessing. And we get to attack for five. Do we see a shadow of the sky clean things up? And it's gonna be Teferi. Forced to bounce the outcasts. Which is pretty easy to replay. Alright, so the elf attacks the fairy, Surtooth goes face, leaves me with a lot of mana still. Probably want to escape before we play Frenzy. So I should probably start by just casting escape. This is 
hardly my worst defeat. And then I think I'm fine playing Dried here. And then we'll play the Exiled Outcasts. I'll keep this one in hand as insurance. And then next turn we can escape again. Opponent pretty much forced to cast a Sweeper here. It's gonna be another Teferi instead. Let's escape, see if we can find a Devil's Play. Can find two of them, in fact. So how much mana can I make? So I can Devil's Play for six and then attack for four, so that's just enough to kill them here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. We're missing Dryad or Surtooth, but we've got Ramp into Frenzy, which I guess also works. So I'll keep, and then... I guess in this case I don't mind playing Grazer first. Sparring Construct, so... Another Tempered Steel deck. Swordtooth, perfect draw here. And next turn we get to go off with our Experimental Frenzy, hopefully. Ooh, escape. Let's escape first. And get in for five. And next turn, playing Frenzy with more mana available is going to be better. Crystal and Giants gets Lifelink. Another escape is tempting. Yeah, let's play another one. Found a Devil's Play. So let's just kill this... Crystal and Giants. And then play a Grazer, I guess. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Obosh. Our hand's acceptable, bit of ramp into escape to refuel, hopefully find those Surtooths and Dryads. And if we're putting some Mono Reds, having these O3s as early blockers is going to be quite useful. Put it on the Gruul version and the turn one Elf. Fair enough. I will need another land to cast escape. And it's gonna be a Gilded Goose. It's the other one drop in the Gruul deck. Could see a Stomp on the Outcast, perhaps. Another Gilded Goose, alright. Luckily found a lands. Let's escape. Alright, so we will get to make our first dragon next turn. And then double dryads. Still missing an extra card draw effect. Another escape or frenzy would be ideal. Goblin Ruin Blaster. Oh no. 
means no dragon for the outcasts. But we don't really care too much about losing one mana. Alright, let's see if we get to make a dragon next turn. And then hoping for a good top deck, otherwise we can play our companion. Another rune blaster. Opponent really doesn't want us to get that uh, dragon token. Opponent's got one card left in hand, and then their Obosh companion. And Frenzy is a great top deck. Just want some lands off the top. Another Frenzy. Feels bad. Alright. We'll have to wait another turn before we can go off. Cycles Yudaru. So opponent's kind of playing the stock Gruul or Bosch deck, which also has Luka in it to sacrifice a small creature and get Yidaro as a more expensive top end that can also be cycled. So the Ruin Blasters do deal for damage now, so probably want to trade those off for some of my Elves. Still no Dragon Token with Outcast after getting two of our lands destroyed. I guess I'll block one of them and then I'll chump one with the Grazer. Since I might need the extra mana from Elf. Alright, Devil's Play can take care of a Bosch, so that's why we left the Elf in play. And hoping there's a land next. All those juicy land drops. Alright, so now we'll finally get to make our first dragon. We've got our frenzy going with double dry it, so don't hate my spots. Opponent drew a lot of one mana accelerants and now Clothis. Also nice combo with a Bosch as you get to deal four damage. With the ability. Not our Devil's Play, so I could just aim that upstairs. Which is probably what I'm gonna do. Opponent will get to exile my Devil's Plays as well with Clothis, but I guess if we have two it doesn't matter too much. So X equals eight. Sadly, Escape is our next card instead of more lands. Opponent can gain quite a bit of life with all these copies of Gilded Goose. Clothes also gains two per turn. So it's more likely that I kill them with Dragon Tokens than I do with Devil's Play. Grazer is still a way to put lands in play from our hand with a Frenzy, so that's kind of nice. Do I want to take two? I don't think I do. If this game goes late, we'll be in great shape. I don't need to take any unnecessary risks. Can fetch with a passage. Can always decide to sacrifice my friends if I want to get access to escape.
And then how much mana do I have available? Nine total. So I can play Gigantha, which doesn't leave quite enough to kill Warboss with the Devil's Play. So I guess I would rather kill the Warboss then. And then I can decide to sacrifice the Experimental Frenzy end of turn to maybe cast Escape. So if I had shocked myself with the Stomping Ground, I would have been able to play Gigantha as well that turn. Although 5-5 just gets blocked by Clothis. Jade Light finds two forests. Let's sag the Frenzy. Or dragon army ever expanding. Six, no need to play this untapped. I guess I could have played Frenzy and see what's on top before deciding whether to shock myself. Devil's Play can be played for one. Normally we would cast it for zero just to put it in the graveyard, but with the Clothis it's a little bit different, so I guess I'm fine drawing it and just playing two elves here. Again, I had the option of playing that land untapped and play Gigantha. And then I'm just gonna draw the Devil's Play. And then at some point I might sack Frenzy to just burn our opponents out. Which could be as early as next turn already. I have around 50 mana in lands plus 3 from the Elves. Another Devil's Play on top is going to make that easier. So, float all our mana. And then X equals 18. Opponent can sack food to survive, but then we can attack with the dragons. I guess I even miscounted. They can chump, make food, sacrifice it, and still die. Alright, sweet. So we finally got to see a longer game where we got to leverage Experimental Frenzy alongside all those extra land drops and then Devil's Play to close out the game. Sweet, so yeah, overall I've been enjoying this red-green Experimental Frenzy deck quite a bit. A deck I used to play in Standard back when we had Sir Tooth plus Frenzy, but in the meantime we got Dryad as another addition to make the deck more consistent, and now Devil's Play and the Dragon Master Outcast in the Anthology expansions to kind of round out the deck perfectly, and we even get to make use of a random companion, although I don't think we've even cast Gigant in any of the games today, so definitely not a necessary part of the deck but just a nice free roll for the time being. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. 
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.